This is Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. This podcast is made in collaboration with The Jewish Journal. Check them out at jewishjournal.com. Also in collaboration with Arutz Sheva, israelnationalnews.com. If you'd like to support the podcast, visit 2njb.com slash donate. In Israel, the Holy Land, the religious epicenter of the world, it's not easy to come by a kosher bacon cheeseburger. That's right. You heard me right. A kosher bacon cheeseburger. At Bodega, this is not an oxymoron. Founded in 2019, Bodega has Tel Avivians and Israelis alike in a fanatical food frenzy. From their Philly cheesesteaks to their BLTs, everything is kosher and everything is certifiably mouthwateringly delicious. Sitting right across from, cinema, from the Cinematheque, Bodega is Tel Aviv's newest American-style burger joint. Todd Ahrens grew up in L.A. and has been a professional chef for over 20 years. He has worked in kitchens in Italy, New York City, San Francisco, L.A., and Israel, and was founding executive chef of Tierra Sur in Oxnard, Oxnard California. James Oppenheim has been working in high tech for over 20 years before entering the food business. We are super excited to host the owners of Bodega, Todd Ahrens and James Oppenheim, on the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you guys? Hi. Terrific. All yeah. right, we got through that. <laughs> <laughs> Staying dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm ashamed to admit, I told you guys this before, but I have yet to be there, but I'm so excited because you guys brought us something. Yeah, but this is I from don't. the deli down the block. Oh, this isn't from <laughs> Bodega? Look at his face. I'm no, so I mean, disappointed you know, We just now. felt like we shouldn't end up. You know, uh, come empty-handed. So okay, we're all oh, okay. That's nice. No, I, was... uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I You see, I, I told that. you. I ate that. I ate that up. That's yeah, right. me too. <laughs> well, that's what you get for not having come yet. Yeah, so. Now yeah. I'm dis- now I'm disappointed. <laughs> you didn't eat it up yet. Yeah, <laughs> but so, okay. I I, I got to uh, I imagine I have a T-shirt. There is no such thing as a kosher cheeseburger. Convince me otherwise. Oh, you guys are looking at me. Oh. Change my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Change my mind. Yeah. Um, also, there is no such thing as a kosher kosher bacon. Well, let me put it to you this way: uh, there is no such thing as kosher food. There's only good food and bad food. Okay. That's a good answer. So yeah. you can taste kosher and not kosher. Good. Food doesn't and make bad a difference. Food. Yeah. When I no. go to the restaurant every day, I plan on <laughs> making good food, not kosher food. But that's that's pro- that's many would argue. It's a challenge that, like, you cannot... Many that are probably jaded in some way. So, so ch- change my mind. Well, I can't change your mind unless you're going to actually <laughs> eat the food. <laughs> no, but, but I mean, I mean the, the point is, it, it looks... Okay, it's, it's very hard to, to... Because the thing is, cheeseburger is made with cheese. Bacon is made from um, pork. And... Trying to fake it for for someone like me who's completely a- atheist, uh, secular, it's just it, it it it's a bit sad. Like if you can't have the real thing, why try to aspire to it? Just uh, find other lanes to excel at. So I'll, I'll, does it I'll, make any sense what I'm saying, or is it if, just... if you don't mind, I'll I'll take that. I I hear what you're saying. It's like. Um... Why should people get plastic surgery, for example? This is who you are. Change your, why change yourself? What you, are, what you are is what you are. And what I think Todd was saying is the misconceptions about kashrut. I'm with you also. Atheist, hello, out there in TV land, podcast land. Um, I, I do eat kosher food. I also eat kosher food. I'll eat anything that tastes great. Mm-hmm. And... That's part of what brought Todd and me together because the the whole idea of kashrut is is in our view not a place that you arrive to and that it's binary. I know that's generally the way it's understood kashrut that there's that especially in Jewish ideas of separation of havdalah all of that sort of thing there's something that's acceptable that's something that's not acceptable. Well, what's happened I think in in recent years, and Todd is a, a proponent of it and one of the people who started this way of looking at things, is that kashrut is 
a jumping off point. It's not a place that you arrive to. It's a place that is part of the journey, if that makes sense. So when you're when you're trying to understand, well, what do you mean kosher bacon? It's a contradiction in terms. It's like jumbo shrimp, right? They cancel each other out. But when you start to discuss on, on a deeper level what is actually bacon, the definition of bacon is not pork. The definition of bacon is a process. It could You could create it's, bacon out of lamb. You could create bacon out of beef. You could create bacon out of pork. And the sadness isn't, uh, but I think what you're describing, I don't find there's anything sad with people trying to have great experiences, wh- whatever they are. So can you have a chicken entry code by that? A uh, chicken entry? Well, if that... <laughs> No, the entrecote no, you is you're, part you're, of the You're, you're cow. too fixated on the actual terms. Yeah, I mean, people b- borrow uh, culinary terms and try to make them into something else. You're saying entrecote, make it uh, chicken. Chicken doesn't have that longissimus dorsi, the actual muscle that is the entrecote. Exactly. I, get, I get what you're saying. But bacon is belly fat, belly meat. So, But it, most animals have belly meat like lamb, like farm animals. But none of them is as good as the yeah, real but, uh, thing. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Well, well, I want to get to that. Well, I want to <laughs> talk about that for a moment. <laughs> when, when has any Israeli had the real thing? Because I myself have eaten heirloom uh, uh, pork. I've, I've you know, raised pork in America, and I've, I've eaten real you know, belly. Uh, you know, uh, and made myself... Pork belly. Pork belly. And yeah. made, so and you made know... Bacon. So I know, uh, but to be here... True. What what there is is a really poor representation of it that's available unless you because yeah right so but people are ignorant even, but even the poor but, even the poor but objectively but they have nothing to even compare it to that's what I'm saying as they come in they yes. say objectively they say hey oh this is not <laughs> it's, if the chazir is the only thing that makes it bacon and it's not good then that's really us that makes perfect sense but. I, I, am, I, am I too pushy? Ethan is giving me these looks. No, it's, okay. it's, no, very, important to, it's very important to me because... No, because I knew this no, would no, be tell, me what, me, tell me what's <laughs> digging at you. I, I'll tell you what. In Tel Aviv, in the, in the past year, l- more and more restaurants stopped serving pork, stopped serving bacon on their burgers, and moved to a lamp bacon, which to me, is, it, it's fraudulent. Right. To sell. Wait, wait, why would they? Why is that even the case? You think? <laughs> you gotta be kidding uh, first me. of all, I don't even know if it's true, but let's it say is it is true. It no, is okay, true. let's say it is more true. But, but why, I, I'll, why I'll, is I'll, I'll, can, I'll give you references later. Why? But why, why? it's happening? Yeah. Because uh, for some peculiar reason, Israelis who are secular, uh, who eat shrimps, who eat seafood, they won't touch pork. So many restaurants here in Tel Aviv realize like they're losing lots and they won't go to restaurants that serve pork, even though they're completely secular. That's which to me is bizarre. And so many restaurants decided it's a business decision to stop serving pork. I would think of it, I, w- I would think of it in a bit of a different way. My wife just got back from India recently. And um, what I thought was kind of cool, we talked a lot about it, is look, she's a yoga person. She's not hanging out at the fast food joints that I go to, right? But she did make a stop inside of McDonald's just for the sake of our marriage, I guess. And one of the things that she saw that was really cool, in my opinion, was that if you look at the menu of McDonald's there, there are no beef burgers. They make it out of mutton, right? Now, it's not because every single person in India is Haredi. It's not, that's not the reason why. But there is something that I think when, when something's in public, there's a bit of an understanding of, of identity or national identity. And I, I don't know these folks who are secular but won't eat pork. I, I don't understand that either. We're on the same page with that. But life is complicated, and most people aren't consistent, and that's okay. And if they, there is a demand, and we're, we're showing that there is a demand, to be able to experience what the world has to offer in a way that could actually unite people and not divide people. So on on the bodega, in the bodega example, what we see, and we see it all the time, is I I would say, I would estimate maybe, I don't know, depending on time of day, maybe 10, 20% tops of the people who come to our restaurant are what we would all consider people who keep kosher. Okay, with all the flexibilities that you mentioned and all that sort of thing. But there are tons of people who don't. And there are a lot of people also who aren't 
I know I, I know this is Israel and all, but they're not Jewish either, right? These are people, whether they're Muslim, Christian, etc., uh, especially Muslims who hadn't been able to eat or try at least pork. And then suddenly you see, and you see it at Bodega all the time, there'll be tables outside and it'll be uh, secular Jews, religious Jews, uh, uh, Israeli Arabs, Palestinian Arabs. They're all this mix of people. To our listeners, Arabs also don't eat pork. Muslims. Muslims. Right. Yeah. Muslims. So when, when, what we see is, like, we could have a high-level conversation of, of the theory of, well, why are you doing it? What, in a way, like, I don't even think it's relevant. What to me is real important, and maybe it's because I'm from the states is what the market dictates and what the market wants. And if the market is having a particular kind of demand, what we see, especially if, if we're going to break down uh, the audience of people who come to Bodega, the people who appreciate and love us most are the Israelis who have traveled. Israelis, local Israelis, who realize that the experiences that they had, whether in New York and LA or Miami or London or anywhere else, there, there's this thirst, there's this desire to have those experiences, to, to have that kind of fun, funky, crazy place where they could just hang out and have great food. It's that, that Todd, and, Todd and I are, it, it's interesting, we're born two weeks apart, we're like brothers from another mother, and our DNA are those places, the, the places that you remember as a kid, whether it's in Alabama or whether it's in Tel Aviv. It doesn't matter. Everybody has those memories of when they were young and the smells and the, and the sounds and the, <laughs> and the dude behind the counter who would putting out great food with great love. Like that's really what our message that's, that's is much more uh, than, I mean, than the them, actual detail. We had discussions about how there is no American food here, for, like real American food, nowhere. There's no, there also, it's not only American, there's no really Italian food here in Israel because right. they don't serve pork, which is, ba- yeah. Well, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't think, I gotta, I gotta, but it, I don't think pork is Italian food or is oh, American food. Oh, it's a food. huge part of Italian. Like, I mean, without pork, I there agree. is no Italian food. <laughs> there's a lot of pork and there's a lot of pork in American food, but there's American food that doesn't have pork in it and there's Italian food and you can make it with other things and it's delicious so what's the difference without so cheese i want to i want to no interject Italian. something yeah. and we'll, i want to talk let's from the, the let's the, from, let the yeah, chef from the from the chef perspective We're, we'll talk a little bit about um ingredient and like what we choose like and how we cook um if you look at and like you're saying like the whole idea about it being lamb and so forth i'm looking for the best product like when i said to you about good food and bad food if i if i go out there and you tell me there is and I'm, I mean, not that I would because I am kosher myself, but that there is in this area, in this region, that there is amazing pork that's being raised. And that's what we, this is traditionally what we eat here. It's not. There is amazing lamb that's being raised here. And you mean and, in Israel? In Israel. Yeah. And that is a product that is viable, that is uh, affordable and, and is amazing. And there's a tradition of eating it here. Um, I recently wrote something about uh, you know, all the newspapers are all in, in about lamb bacon. Like you said, it's becoming more popular. Um, that the, the idea behind it is that there's, there's smoking and curing. And we don't have, there, this is an area that there is no wood, right? So what you would have here is lamb. You do have preserved lamb here. It's called Berber lamb or lamb that where they used to take mutton and, or lamb, preserve it in, uh, in oil and spices and bury it in the ground. Um, Bedouin would do it, and, and this is what they would eat in the desert, right? So this is sort of a form of preserved lamb. There's no wood here to smoke. I mean, that's more of a European process. Mm-hmm. So the whole process of, of smoking and making bacon really started in Europe, where obviously that's the process of cooking. So now we are we're more evolved. We have new cook tech, you know, obviously the techniques of cooking here, and we could smoke, and where there's more barbecue things that are going on. So it would make sense that you take a product like lamb, which is very good here, and you would apply the processes of the new processes of smoking and preserving them. Uh, great foods have come out of many preservation techniques, and, and obviously, we, you know, lamb or bacon being one of them. So that's what I'm saying. It's more of a process. Now, as a, as a chef, all I ask myself is, I want to produce a great product. Now, it's funny to me because amongst Jews, 
we always have this conversation. Oh, it's pork, it's lamb, it's not real uh, with the Israelis. You know, where I cooked in, in, in Los Angeles, my whole kitchen is not Jewish. They're either Filipino, Mexican. They are uh, culinary graduates. They are uh, chefs themselves. And they have no hangups. So when I am started making lamb bacon there, they, some of them started preferring it to you know, the, because they like the flavor. They're just honest with themselves like, oh, this is great. And in fact, they would ask to take it home because some of their family members would say, you know what? This is really amazing. So that's what I'm saying. We, are, we have so many of these filters that we're trying to say, oh, we're trying to do this. There's so many restaurants here. They have lobster from Maine or they have this. Like, really? You're going to fly in lobster to Israel to have, just so you can have shellfish on your menu? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't go along with my food philosophy either. My food philosophy was born way before I became kosher. Uh, Chef Peter Hoffman in New York, uh, we would go to the green market. We were into almost like the Dan Barber uh, idea behind, behind food about local, you know, not just localism, but, but things that don't require shipping them in by, uh, by plane, you know, using jet fuel. So what's the local, what's the local uh, food and how could you improve it? How could you reinvent it or... or uh, give it back in a new technique. Is that from like a sustainability place Sus or from like a freshness? Yeah, sustainability too, but also like sort of what you what what you what your body would crave in that area. It's a philosophy of like, if you live in this area, like in winter months, there are, there are scarcity of certain foods. And, you know, obviously Israel is much like, like uh, Los Angeles where there's like, you know, there's a constant flow of a lot of, you know, produce and a mm -hmm. lot of things. But um, yeah, it's it's a sustainable, but it's also local, you know, it's, it's also less... Uh, carbon in, uh, footprint yeah, yeah, yeah. on the, you know, not using jet fuel to bring in your, you know, shellfish from uh, North America to yeah. just so you could have it on the menu. Like, what's the? I don't understand the. There are so many good products here, and there's so many great cooking techniques here, um, from the Arabic world. From you know, I mean, you could just you could delve into that, and you could, and some people do it. They do a great job of it here. I'm not saying, but the, to me, it's it's a, it's not even a main point of like why is it lamb obvious it's lamb that's the, that's the if you go to um southern france yeah it's pork okay because that's what they would raise that's how we do it and i agree with you about italy i lived and i worked there <laughs> i mean it is pork i get it but that's what if you went to an italian chef and you would yeah. tell them oh, you can't use pork and you can't no, use real cheese the, it would kill you strutto de maele is the uh, is, is even in their bread he it's would even, murder you of course <laughs> but but you afraid <laughs> No, a bit, but listen, but <laughs> he is there, shaking. <laughs> but there is, um, but that's what I'm saying is paying homage to those traditions. Um, we don't. Israel itself is uh, very exciting because there are a lot of traditions, but there's so many immigrants here from so many different places. Mm -hmm. We're all bringing new, new, exciting techniques and new, you know. By the way, so, one million Russians eat pork in right. Israel. Yeah. Right, but I think like, you know, food being such a cultural thing, but also being like, like an art. It's it's like walking this fine line between like maintaining traditions and like experimenting and breaking the boundaries and like to to live within that box I feel like doesn't really right well I mean to be honest with you I'm I'm co I became kosher I was I became how come um it was a personal journey for me it was a religious journey and that's that's personal for me it's my relationship with God okay. but for our um, listeners you're not you're not wearing a kippah yeah I mean I was so. wearing a hat don't tell my wife that oh okay <laughs> yeah, did I just part. did I just did I just out you yeah he just outed me <laughs> I'm so oops uh, I was working in the restaurant honey I was wearing my hat no. we're gonna fix like, that in post production yeah. <laughs> no but we'll okay. just cut out the knot you <laughs> are wearing a kippah yeah, I noticed that you were wearing a kippah <laughs> that's my bald spot but, um no I mean listen I I um I, I hate having this discussion because to me it's it's very to me my relationship and my religion is very personal. Fair enough. This is what I would like everybody. You know, I think it's not relationship between you and another. You know, it is actually, but I mean like you and God. It's your own relationship. Yeah. So for me, like I I became I was working in New York and it's a long story, but I was uh, looking for spirituality. I grew up uh, conservative. I didn't know much about Judaism. I went through Buddhism. All the whole. You know, movement in New York whole cycle and, of yeah, the whole cycle. Everybody was always looking for something. So people people want a spiritual part of their life. They want to grow in that aspect. So eventually, for me, and 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 rightfully so, I felt very comfortable with coming back to uh, to Judaism or learning more about it and becoming more observant. So for the past uh, you know now over twenty two years, I, I've been kosher, and I had to make that meld with my my my. Uh, my career before that, I was not a kosher chef. I did not. I worked and lived in Italy. I worked and trained in San Francisco. I was not kosher. 
In fact, I knew nothing about kosher whatsoever, and I, and I was going to give up my career at one point. If I couldn't create food that I thought was worthy, that my peers, uh, the other people I worked with in kitchens, other chefs thought that it was just as good, I would not continue because it wouldn't make sense to me. To, 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 but it was important enough to me in my life to make that decision. And, and that was been my challenge for the past, you know, like James said, in, in, the, in the, the melding of those two worlds of kosher and my culinary career have been really what I've been forged to do. So, and I, and I want to mention just because it's sort of like, it's charcuterie. It's the idea. I used to do plenty of pork charcuterie, obviously. There's the art of like um, forming like, you know, terrines and pâtés and, and sausages. And I love that part. And I didn't want to give that up. So I found like alternatives, but I don't think anything that is, that would, that you could say is, uh, would take it down a notch. Like, oh, it's not as good. If it's not as good, trust me, I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be sitting here. So wait, let's, I want to get into a bodega a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like you, I mean, you've been around, you've been a chef in some incredible kitchens. You, you're really knowledgeable about food. Isn't like, uh, flipping burgers beneath you? Oh, hell no. Okay. Hell no. So I have to tell you, <laughs> there's a place. No, it's like, because that's where it all starts. And James touched on it when he talked to you too about like where your favorite place is. you're the talent and he's the mind or what, what's the... <laughs> uh, Why do you say that with surprise? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> what's the, let's Actually, we'll get, we'll get into that. But no. <laughs> or, you, or you're both and you're just a no, pretty I, face. You gotta love yes, James. Yes, I am reaction. the pretty yeah, face. <laughs> James is the model face. Yes. Of, uh, yes. Of <laughs> the cautionary of, uh, tale. Yeah. No, but uh, uh, the whole point is that I don't know where I was now. Burgers, burgers. How, how burgers, can a yeah. chef make right, burgers? I was a burger chef. Well, look at all the chefs. They're all making burgers. I mean, look at them. I mean, everybody's doing it. Yeah. But, I mean, this the nothing shouldn't be pompous enough to say, like, you know, this food. But let's, like I said, let's go back. Let's look at, like, where you started from. Like, what, what were your inspiration from uh, growing up? Your favorite, you know, when you're a kid, you have a, a great burger place that you love. Like, I had Apple Pan in Los Angeles. And I was like, I remember that burger. Not kosher. <laughs> <laughs> nice, great Tillamook, you know, hickory burger. It's better than In-N-Out. It was great. Yeah, it's still there. The place is still oh. there. And, it, and I would say, to tell you the truth, it's, it's a little more special than In-N-Out. It is. It's, yeah. Okay. For in my, my book. But I do love In-N-Out as well. But I'm saying, but that kind of imprint on me as a, as a kid, and you're like, wow, this is great. Why does it taste like? Is, is a culinary experience. And, and most chefs will tell you that's where it started out with. Uh, Danny Meyer is not a chef, but he opened Shake Shack. But why did he open that? Because of the nostalgia of, of what he got, what, what he remembered at getting you know, great shakes and, and cheeseburgers. Roadside burger joint yeah. when he would go with his family. So and that is Lewis. just as much as an inspiration. And, and, and many places that I remember in my mind is like, that guy making, all I look for is food that's made by somebody who really cares, who really gives a shit. You know what I mean? And you could tell that when you go to a place, if there's love or not. Right. So the guy could be flipping a burger or making a falafel or whatever, but you know when you go there that that guy is doing it and he really enjoys doing it. And you developed like the recipes and everything and the menu from scratch. Yeah. And you, you for the restaurant now? Yeah. No, I bought them all. No, of course I'm not. <laughs> Actually, China. you know what? I, I would jump in because what I, what I, food is like sex in this way. It's really fun to talk about. But it's so much more fun to actually do it. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah, now, waiting. we did something that we don't <laughs> ordinarily do. We brought some food with us. Because oh, for the full-blown oh, bodega experience, oh, yes. it's you really, be you got to be there. Right. But we figured in this pouring rain that we'd hook you guys up Careful so we could have something to talk Thank about. Thank you so much. Yes. That's of awesome. Of course, a pleasure. I'm pulling it out. The food. That yeah. is okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want, I don't want, I'm pulling out the meat. Uh, I, I said it's different oh. than sex. It's not the exact same yeah. thing. Okay. He didn't I mean thought. it in a Clinton way. Exactly. Okay. okay. So you want to you put these on the plates? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, you want to plate? We're them? civilized. Let's see what this we got is here. Civilized. You, home. you like? Actually, you if you look at this, it. we um we we started with the food truck. So our in, our real DNA is that Wait. food truck right style. That's another thing, like you said about chefs. So look how many chefs have uh you know, especially in Let's, Los Angeles. I'll breathe a knife and we'll cut okay. and we'll all okay. share it, right? So yeah, it started out with food trucks. You know, like yeah. uh, it's a I'll great. Take your garbage. It's it's a, there's low barrier to opening up a food truck as opposed to a restaurant. So yeah, no, I gotta say that it really hurt me to ask that question well, because nah, no, it, no it really did because I am like I, I 
I wanted to ask you because I feel like that's a, a point of view that a lot of people have. But for me, it's like going to a burger joint is we cut the burger just the best sure, culinary sure. experience. You ask, you can ask my girlfriend. She's just sick of burgers already. Like I don't know what it is, yeah. but I and this is why I'm ashamed that I haven't been because I didn't even know. But I'm ashamed that I haven't been because I fucking love burgers. Yeah. Excuse my language. But well, I, you could say burger in public. <laughs> <laughs> Majority but, of people do. <laughs> but I think there's like it's it's an art, and you can like go around Tel Aviv trying like hundreds of different burgers. And I mean, my personal favorite, maybe it'll change right now. But my personal favorite is Ben's in Florentine. I don't know if you guys have tried it. I, I've pa- I've passed by there with my son the other day, but I haven't been there. But it looks pretty cool. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot no, of competition. No, are you kidding me? There's a lot oh, of competition. You're not, you're not eating with no, no, no. For you guys. Get are you off. kidding? No, for you guys to don't be that oh, way. God. Come on. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we let's have get into ones? the food. Let's get into okay. the food, explain. and we can explain a little bit of what we do. Uh, so this has the fake bacon on it. Wait. No, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Pass a plate. There you go, man. There you go, brother. No, yeah, listen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So James, our inspiration was exactly what we were talking about, and I and I get what you're saying. Like, you know, I don't know. I I tried. I came to Israel, and I thought, listen, I had a. I only worked in high end restaurants. To to answer what you were saying. And I thought, but I, I always wanted to do like sandwiches. I always wanted to do, you know, like that's the places the chefs would go eat. We would go eat. Food truck, we would go eat after work. Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of self-indulgent. It's like, you know, we did this, but it's really accessible. And mm-hmm. and there's you bring the same philosophy to it as you would any anything that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it, there's not much of a difference, I, uh, you know, as as far as philosophy and integrity of what we're trying to, yeah. what we're trying to do. No, I think, you, you that, talk, I think that like, I think that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is hard for but, me but to But actually, do, but before you get into yeah. it, I want to just talk a little bit about okay. the, the dish itself okay. now. Let's show it to the camera right now. Now, what's, oh, really, what's really important to guys. get a handle on is at, virtually everything that you see, everything on is on that plate. If it wasn't manufactured in-house, it was designed by us. It's all artisanal. For example, the bun. Okay, so we tried in vain to find a, a real burger bun, a real potato bun here in Israel. Good luck. When we, decide, when we saw that we weren't able to actually find one and buy one from a store, we were able to find an artisanal baker and design it from the ground up to make it the right size, shape, small thing of people. Well, we drove them crazy. Yeah, we drove them crazy. It took months to get to it. Well, how, do, how does one do that? Well, in Can Israel, we eat while yeah, please. Yeah, please okay. do. And so this, this is, is torture. This yeah. is a, a bacon cheeseburger, okay. and this is another signature oh dish God. called a Reuben. I knew this podcast was worth it. These yeah. three years have three finally, years have finally, paid, finally off, right? paid off. Finally paid off. You'll still have to come and try a hot one. Though. Yeah, come on. <laughs> no, it's a rainy really night in Tel Aviv. <laughs> Can't we just invite you again for another episode? Every, every night, right? <laughs> every time I want a burger. <laughs> but bring we friends. Have Todd and James on again. <laughs> exactly. It's Todd and James hour, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So wow. what's going down in here, this is a smash burger. This smash amazing. burger is a very particular way of making burgers that really doesn't so much exist here in Israel. Most of the burgers that you see, I like to call them toilet cloggers. They're these monster, big-ass burgers that... I don't know how that happened here, but they became too big. The bigger, the better. The much more, um, um, I think, evolved kind of approach to burgers are is, is to smash them on a, a plancha, on a griddle, that you take a, a ball of meat, flatten it, cook it very, very quickly. The, the patties you see are thin. That's it's a, Ethan's it's a, favorite. That's a quarter pounder that, wow. that we serve. That's the basic burger. And then we go up from there. But what that does, it gives that great crust. Again, you'd, you'd really feel it lots more when you're in the restaurant. But it gives that great crust. And it, it's, it's binary in that either the burger is done or it's not. It's not like you could have one medium rare. It's a smash burger. It's a smash burger. It's a smash yeah, burger. Yeah, yeah. It's a smash burger. You can, I saw a video where you guys are smashing it on the grill. It's almost like there's already holes in between. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like so thin that it already starts almost breaking up. That, and that's what makes it so, uh, it's so tasty. Good. And that's a particular thing. Yeah, you have, the, uh, you have that, the browning of the meat, the, the caramelization, the increasing Maillard the flavor. Reaction. The mo- yeah, as they call the what? The I didn't what? want to say it because I didn't want to sound, <laughs> sound like a total pretentious <laughs> asshole. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's a little late for that. When, mal- when you were mal- talking mal- about the belly mal- browning, did, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but wait, what is it again? I need to know that term so that I can. Mallard like... browning is a browning of protein rather than sugars. 
So not what brownie? Maillard, 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 Maillard reaction. Maillard reaction. Yes. Okay. Google it. <laughs> now I can now I can be condescending when I eat burgers. Totally. With my That's friends. why we're here. <laughs> we're giving you tools to be a jerk. Right. Which one's yours, Ethan? So yeah. the thing is that uh, a lot of these flavors we'll and, the and profiles that James and I grew up with with these burgers, but we knew uh, we 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 you know we weren't uh, you know that big of assholes. We looked around <laughs> Tel Aviv first to see what was going on. You know, like. Yeah. Uh, we didn't assume that like we would. Uh, there know, are do, lots of burgers. burgers. There's joints lots of good Italy. burgers here. Yeah. One mile radius. A, a yeah. one mile radius from Bodega. There are 22 burger joints, and I've been to all of them. But I gotta say, this that's what's nice about it is that you they're all very similar. Like American Burger, Ben's. Uh, right. Uh, what's the one on uh, Mendelemos? Memphis. There's Memphis. They're all very similar. They're all that fat patty. That like yeah. you were describing Moses. before, this is like different. Look, right. we chose to open in Tel Aviv because we wanted to be part of a culinary conversation. I, I, I don't. Again, this is my caveat. If anything that I say sounds pretentious, just give me a break. Okay, I've been waiting late. to have like a uh, like a pompous conversation about burgers with that's people. What, so and someone to be more. Pretentious that's why no ore is here. My, <laughs> yeah. we, we could have that conversation after yeah. we bounce. No, kidding. Come on. Good, In any good. case, so if you if you look where Bodega is, we're a few doors down from uh, Miznon by Al Sheni, Mayor mm-hmm. Doni. There, there 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 is a culinary conversation that's going on. And what you generally see are these Israeli celebrity chefs will have kind of a dumbed down, bastardized, kosher version of the things that they do. And Todd and I have been to some of these places, and overhyped. <laughs> I don't. I mean, when you're inside of the business, you don't. I don't like talking about any other people's businesses because everybody should succeed. We're very positive about that sort of thing. However, there is a lot of room to add to that conversation, to bring something authentic to the table where you don't feel like you're missing out. I've been to, like I said, to those 22 burger places and there are more of them. If I know Todd well enough and we've been partners long enough to know that if we didn't have something particular to add, we wouldn't bother to do it. We'd do something else in the food business. What's your favorite though? Burger joint. Oh, except, a, except for yours, like from those you can you Shake Shack, one? I think is pretty amazing. No, but here in Tel Aviv. Oh, um, Would you pl- no comment. You're gonna touch. Tough. It's tough for him. You're gonna put. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no comment. I'd say I don't have a favorite. Okay. I, Interpret that I the think, way you oh, think you'd like. Uh, that's 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 uh, <laughs> that was cute of me, that's right? A cop out. <laughs> Um, have you you? I'm sure you like did. I've been uh, to all of them. You've been to all of them. Virtually all of yeah. them. Yeah, you can you can yeah. just pick a non kosher one. Then. And then what? <laughs> and then, and then, then then I'll advocate going like no. It's not even about the business side, honestly, guys. If if I felt that there was, I took a bite of a. Do you know what that's like asking? What pizza do you like best in Tel Aviv? The answer is I like them all equally. What, what bagel place do you like? Because when you're from New York, you got to understand there's yeah, this madness it, that New Yorkers have. That mm-hmm. if you're not from there. When you're talking pizza, when you're talking bagels, there are certain things of, of what you understand. And that's not to say there isn't great pizza or, well, there isn't. Here. We'll put that aside yeah. in theory. Yeah. But yeah, there can be, but there is a lot that needs to be done. What what you do have, you do have some really great food yeah. here in Israel. And I think a lot of it is what Todd was saying before. It's the, the food that's native to the place. Yeah. That's what's real important. And and when we actually, when we named our restaurant. At least ingredient based, you know, like, there's a lot of people doing new things with it. But, but that's absurd yeah. because in, in Tel Aviv, people like the most burgers and pizzas. Mm-hmm. And we, what you say essentially is that as a New Yorker and uh, like none of them, like they, they, it's true though, that I, some I of the I places, that's what I'm saying. I'm not putting, I'm sorry to jump in. No, but, no, it's cool. Uh, you're asked, which is my favorite. I say, and I say, I like them all equally. You could interpret that the way you, take I'm going to interpret it like this. The truth is there's a lot of places that are Mediocre. really hyped up in Tel Aviv. And they're like, my favorite place is a place that not many people know about. And all the places that people really hype up, like I ate at American Burger and I don't want, I mean, like I'm not afraid of bad mouthing because I don't have a business or anything right. like that. I don't need to be a PC. 
That's not that good. Yeah, but, it's a but, good burger, but, but it's not but, like. But what about uh, the vitrina? The vitrina is like I think it's, there's a good consensus. Eh, it's about a bit. That. It's a bit uh, too uh, like. Wait, a consensus uh, a among who? Among who is there a consensus that it's a nice burger? Okay, oh, hipsters. Vitrina. D- uh, okay. Yeah, they, I got, accept a, they that. got a cool neon <laughs> sign. That's fine. <laughs> so That's exactly like, the point. And by the by the way, and and no, take lemon this zest th- on fries. Come on, uh, dude. Uh, That's, That's not exactly a, the point. You <laughs> could take this, uh, I, take I this however you like it's it. It's tasty, but it's not a burger experience. Oh, it's the like a marketing, twist. what what the internet I, has I done. I agree with you on that. <laughs> what the internet has done with food and many other areas of life, obviously, is it 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 has transformed our opinion or our view of what makes something good by how photogenic it might be or by how many people like the picture or any of that stuff it's instagramability it's, it, it, as as i like to say the revolution will not be instagrammed okay <laughs> like when the revolution is coming up on the ground whether it's on the political stuff or whether it's all of this i think that food is is an essential part of connecting people how how many I, like I like you mentioned in the introduction, in in I've been in high tech for over twenty years, and I'm telling you, with all the deals and investment, all the different crazy stuff that I did all over the years, how many of those deals went down over lunch, over drinks? And I'm not a drinker, but if that if inv- the food is mediocre, in the de- then the, the deal, deal is, is medio- mediocre. It's tougher. Is that when from Trump's book? Uh, one of the laws. Of Actually, the he's, the a, he's, a, he's about the Mickey D's. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> you take that. You could also interpret that the way you like. But the, but the point is just, and I, I'm not pitching just so you know what we're talking about here. So that was the, the bacon cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was, was waiting about, so that yeah. you could uh, describe uh, it to me while okay, I eat it. Okay, so this like is a Reuben. The, okay. This is the Reuben. The yeah. Reuben is, is oh, special. To me, I got to say, it reminds me, uh, there's a bit of a shukut. Uh, yeah. Right, it, that's well, the homage. Yeah, well, there's uh, sauerkraut. Sure we make yeah. our own sauerkraut. Uh, you, the German the, German pronunciation. I don't know. Okay. Right or the well, this was the kimchi. Shukrut one. is a, is, a, is a, it's a, right. it's yeah. It, it's, yeah, is a, it's a kind of a is a cabbage dish. Yeah. It's a cabbage with dish. The, yeah, with with tomatoes and. Shukrut right. is, is sauerkraut in German. Um, well, it's actually the dish of like sausages cooked e- with exactly. uh, with with cabbage, which but the cabbage exactly. has been uh, made into sauerkraut. Yeah. Yeah. So Whatever this is, it is, it's we delicious. make our own. This yeah. is uh, it's, it's really so we sour our great. own sauerkraut, and so from the sauerkraut we make kimchi. This mm. is my my LA uh, influence of Koreatown. So nice. uh, we do we do a very good uh, kimchi mixture of that, which is spicy, you know, Korean chilies. But the bread is also spectacular. Is it? Is yes, there, we have is that there, made for us as well. Yeah, we designed but, the bread. And, and is there like butter on it or something? No, is it it's buttery. Um, no, it's just a little bit of... butter on it, man. Ah, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Damn. This is it how far removed it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. I've been kosher for you. like three or four years. Mm, but He's just no, like... because it shines, the bread. So I was like, did yeah. I, did I so toast it a, with... No, you get a lot of nice right? meat, meat juice and meat fat from the actual pastrami. So mm-hmm. we make a New York style pastrami that we smoke in-house. Mm-hmm. So this is where I'm saying is like the... We, I like to refer to it as really slow fast food, right? So like what we're doing is the processes are very slow, very tedious and... We like souring crowd ourselves, or you know, smoking meat or curing meat, and then we produce great fast food out of it. Yeah. Um, and by the way, all so that integrity. Like, we I, I, gotta, to, I gotta say, yeah. by like you guys have been hearing us eating, our listeners. This is like, I really want to curse, but we we started a collaboration where we can't really curse yeah. as much. This is effing delicious. This yeah, is amazing. it's really nice. It's really good. I appreciate it. Look, it really good. you can feel you can feel the, the love. No, both the burger right. and this <laughs> are just like spectacular. Look, man, when 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 Todd was talking about the the slow processes and etc. So, I'll, let me give you an example. So we recently, um, with a partner of ours, uh, brought out our food truck and we did an event for hundreds of people. So let's say for sake of argument, the, the event starts at 12. We show up at 9, and then we begin prep, and then we pull the stuff from wherever it was in the kitchen, et cetera, making sure that everything is either fresh or house-made, et cetera. There was another food truck there. Let's say, like I said, it started at 12, 11.30. The guy shows up, starts opening cans and bottles. So you, you see how the process of what we do when things are house-made, when things are designed properly – whether it's in whether it's in food or tech or, or any area of life at the end it might not be immediate that you see it but at the end it's the quality that sings so it, when you're talking about whether it's other 
either burger joints, sandwich joints, and we have a lot of other things that are coming out on the menu. We didn't bring you our dog. You, the next, next uh, two Jewish boys. Oh, okay. just happened. So like, I was like, like I said, no, dog. guys cook Korean food. We talked about Man Bites Dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not PC. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's true, right? <laughs> I, I missed them. We, we didn't, we didn't know. Well, let's, we're we're going to... When you said dog, we'll say bacon. Mongolia. I don't, I'm not sure. No, yeah? It was an article. You know the story about Khuldai, yeah. the mayor of Tel Aviv? He bragged that he ate dog. Okay. okay. Really? There yeah. are dogs that are bred in, in for, Viet, no. for meat. But he meant fish or like yeah. Kelev? Yeah. He uh, ate ke- Kelev. Oh, okay. I thought he said he ate he dog bragged, like big He was deal. like, yeah, I've, I've been to there China. I ate the dog. There was a food fanzine called Meat Paper. That I uh, that has I had a subscription to. I actually have that issue somewhere. I'll bring it to you guys. And there is a whole article about uh, I forget where exactly, but there is breeding of certain dogs that uh, they breed for meat. This stuff is so good that and, I don't care. Ta- like you can talk about eating. Dogs. Anyways, uh, okay, I had a like, dog in it. And I'm just like, <laughs> but we're talking about hot pug. Dog. My oh, wife has so a pug. Good. So <laughs> no, we're talking about 100 uh, percent uh, beef hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Just to <laughs> so, just for the record, yeah. I'm gonna finish this burger. No, okay, go, go for ahead. it, man. <laughs> you guys just keep so podcasting. Yeah. Do you want me to make a call and bring some more food? <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. My, my uh, Shalon is probably listening to this right now, and she's like, "Oh no, that she bastard. knows there's another place now on the list." She likes yeah. the place that I go to now because it's close to home, but I think it's uh, I'm I'm gonna have to switch. You guys are a little farther away, but <laughs> that's gonna, okay. We have to deal with it. If you call me in advance, I'll run it out to the car. I, I want to ask. <laughs> I want to ask good. about uh, business because it's infamous. Tel Aviv is infamous for restaurant owners here don't survive. Like every year, dozens, maybe hundreds of restaurants close. Here in Tel Aviv, they say the margin, the profit margin is like, what, 10% barely. And it's so risky and it's excruciating. So why would you do that? Are you actually asking a question about risky startups in Israel? This is the home of Startup Nation. This is the home yeah. of folks who could be entrepreneurial. Look, the if you were to compare the food business to high-tech startup business, the... <laughs> the rate of high tech companies that fail is astronomical, but people still do it. And I don't believe that they're motivated solely by the money in that case. I think they're motivated by passion and a particular mentality. What you see the difference in food versus tech is that the barrier to entry of food is extremely low. If you have a frying pan and a fire and you just got back from your trip to Thailand, suddenly you're in business. That doesn't mean you know anything. Another difference between tech and food is when you're talking about technology, because some of it could be, or at least be perceived as sophisticated and complicated, it could be a black box to people. Oh, I don't know anything about technology. They're not going to enter their opinion. They're not going to start having this conversation. But when it comes to food, part of the reason why I got into the food business, when it comes to food, everybody, if you're alive, you got to eat. And you're eating probably two, at least two or three times a day. There's a familiarity with food. And then suddenly people think that what they know is meaningful simply because they have so much experience with actual eating. Well, I know how to do this or I know how to do that or my mother taught me how to do that and that's really good. And some of it is amazing. But once you bring it out to market and there's real competition, you have to up your game. I don't know how anybody could open a food business without a chef, just like I wouldn't open a a technology company without a CTO, without a chief technology officer. It's that is the analogy to understand. So when you see and the numbers will prove it and show it, so many food places go out of business. That's true. Many of those, most of those had no business going into business in the first place. That's number one. Number two, there's a lot of, especially when you see folks who have the less experience, they're not willing to take this risk of, let's say, let's bring it local to the smash burger. You know, it wasn't it, it wasn't easy f- to the outside world like whoa, suddenly you're different. Everybody is building those toilet cloggers, right? Those massive monster burgers, the bigger the better, the messier. Yeah, throw that on, throw that on. I see it on Instagram like everybody else. I find a lot of that stuff gross. I don't know why it's even interesting to people. I don't get it. However, what you what when you are working with someone like Todd, who's a chef, who has experience, one of the key, and, and you see this, I don't want to draw too much of a parallel, but Steve Jobs 
and Todd are very similar in the sense. Whoa, whoa. Um, you have hey, mom, much are better you hair. Yeah, he looks great. <laughs> Thanks. No he looks now. great. Well, now, for and sure. Steve Jobs among, hair. Yeah. And <laughs> among many of this. Although they say he, hair grows in the case. No, it's just your body shrinks. <laughs> oh. um, what, one of the things that he said, and he said so many really important things. One of the things he said is the toughest part of his job is saying no. He's surrounded by the best that money can buy the most creative, the most creative people, the most intelligent people, people who could dream, they could do crazy stuff. But that just because you can doesn't mean you should. And what you see, especially in the food business, is in order to stick out rather than get the fundamentals in place and to do something like what whether it's designing an artisanal bread or sourcing something locally or do rather than doing the hard work, there's the flash on top. Yeah. Let me throw a pineapple on it and let me throw cilantro on it. And I'm, you know what? Lettuce, tomato, a red onion. And like all of this junk just starts to accumulate Then what is the actual core of your business? So when people, trust me, many people of my technology chums throughout the year say, James, what are you nuts? What are you, crazy? You're leaving a world where you're doing very well and things were going great for you and then you're entering the food business. Well, some of these folks now come to me when they walk into Bodega, somebody just recently, a VC who probably most of the people on the podcast know and I won't mention his name. He came up, so he came up to me and said, James, you're not living the dream here. You're living the wet dream here. Because to be able to create and bring something out to market and see a tight development loop, that's what we used to call it. Like you bring something into market and then you pull back the feedback so you could really up your game all of the time. Well, when we're developing Agile, what we're able to do is Todd and I will sit and we'll say, okay, now it, we're doing hot dogs. What needs to happen? And then we put together the bun and that was a battle to get the bun right. And then we're doing this and we're doing all of this stuff then we put it out to market and get the feedback. It's like an amazing business. You, it's, it's a business and I would advocate anybody who has that kind of passion, do the hard work in the fundamentals. And if you're not able to do it, be bright enough Todd, to know that Todd you can. Seems also and, with Israel, you know, feedback comes very easily, you know. You get a lot of feedback. Oh yeah. People yeah. are honest. Instantly, yeah. So it's, I get what you're What's saying. What's the worst feedback you got? Oh, I think someone walked in and said, uh, there's no good American food. This is Mitbach America. Is, uh, there's no good American food. <laughs> no just, such thing as <laughs> no good such American thing. Food. And yeah. then he walked out, and I was like, okay, that's very nice. We had a few people <laughs> bounce because when they saw it was kosher, they left. But a lot of those folks we won over, and some of them come to the restaurant, and I'm not exaggerating. One or two is sometimes three times a day. We have people. <laughs> it it it, wow. it really digs deep. Yeah, we made some we believers. They're not long-term clients, I can tell you that. People they won't want... survive? Yeah, you mean? No, no there, there is a gym around the corner, oh, so okay. we could <laughs> boost fitness. Thanks, Ken. I did want to say <laughs> that when you, when you mentioned, I mean, uh, less intellectual than what James went through, but uh, that uh, I find, you know, having made, made Aliyah, I find the, you mentioned a little bit about the Israeli attitude about startup nation, and about, I, I, that attitude here I find uh, more invigorating than in America. Like I, for me, like, okay, go try, go try. So you fail. Okay. So you go try again. And that's the attitude here. And I like that. And for me, it, it makes it less of a barrier, uh, to open a business here. I mean, maybe everybody's opening one, maybe there's more failing, but people are trying and you can't have success without the failure part anyways. Mm -hmm. So the question is what you draw from the failure and what you learn from yeah. that. So I, I found it very inspiring, like uh, just Israeli society in general that way, like uh, that everybody's trying to, to do something um, is, is interesting and very nice. You spoke about a, a, like a low barrier of entry for, for you know, opening a restaurant. But uh, I wonder because you spoke about, you know, also coming from America being kind of like the market dictates, sound of, you know, kind of talking about free markets here in Israel. Is it not harder to open a business i mean the whole bureaucracy. bureaucratic process and i mean it's it's got to be much Tell harder me. than in the united states you know it all depends it's funny it's a funny place <laughs> to open a business it is funny look it, until we start until todd and i started working together i was real like i'd done businesses but they were always in the states mm -hmm. so sorry um the i think the intimidating factor for an israeli you know my kids are in the army and they tell daddy you know what you don't understand anything that goes on in here because you didn't do the army. The culture is so connected to the army and the mentality. 
That's our biggest problem. You're like, you're like kids, <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> right? and so, but I, I defanged them a little bit. We used to travel to the States quite a bit. But um, I, I, I think that, I think what Todd said means, it counters what you say. There's, life is about the, your, really your attitude. And it's funny because on a certain level, Israelis claim to be really cynical. I have yet to meet, and I've been around, I'm a little bit older than you. I'm two weeks older than you. Yeah. And a bunch older than you. I have never seen, certainly not a successful one, I have never seen a cynical entrepreneur. When an entrepreneur, there, there's, there's... You gotta be naive. There's, it, <laughs> you, you could call it, you could call it that. I, I call it optimistic. Yeah. There, and, and if... It's a story of Israel too, sitting around in Europe, running, rubbing our hands. So there's no way that we could fight all the fights that need to happen, or in the state, wherever mm -hmm. the, the Jews continuity were. of the movie. Just like new characters that were boring. And I just I gotta stop writing off sequels automatically. I write them off automatically. Of Black Fist, you Godfather Part Two. You remember your point? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Maybe miracles. Defi things so that defining aren't a miracle. To so it's things. So yeah, everything. At the, the the nature of reality is that things die, things slow down, and at the end, if you take a step back, like you're like, whoa, what's the point? But what is a miracle is something that kind of breaks through. It breaks through that standard pattern that we've all could become used to, and in a way, expecting. And I think that's where the cynicism comes up when we're putting something out to market, and we see it's what that's why I really love the food business you have that immediate gratification of the of, of a joy feedback loop that is invigorating that's fun i watched you closely less you let less <laughs> no or but i definitely watched they talk wait stop. that's offensive <laughs> what you want me to watch you i'll watch you too yeah i like not, to be watched. pretty when you eat he's gorgeous <laughs> when he eats the guy i was jealous that's why i wasn't watching okay, uh, okay. there's this reaction bam you it's amazing. Yeah. Like something, ha there are so many systems in your brain yeah. that are absolutely firing and going bananas. It's, it's it, like drugs, just ones that you're supposed to take. Like, yeah. Chemicals, chemicals. chemical reactions. Yeah. And that's what's, what's awesome too, is that when you do something like that, it, it's different than the cut. Somebody once said, the only way to get any feeling out of a television is to jump into a bathtub when it's plugged in. Right with the TV, the, the difference about food is that it becomes embedded. In, it really, it, it it becomes you. Yeah, it becomes part of you. So here we have hundreds of people every day, who are coming to or choosing for with all the competition and all the craziness and everything, every distraction imaginable. And they, on their own, create a bodega lovers group on WhatsApp to talk to each other, to connect with each other. We didn't direct that. Cool. It came, it came organically mm -hmm. they're choosing they we'd like you to be part of this we want to be part of that and one of our someone who became a, a good friend of ours who who started coming to bodega had a baby and we were making up our bodega t-shirts and we're going to get to our t-shirt don't worry you're going to get your t-shirt yeah, don't worry <laughs> like, is this guy not going to give it and you know what swag. it's like i was i said todd you know what let me let me make a, a quick couple onesies for our friends the look on his face when we presented Hey, Mikey, here's the onesie. He entered a state of shock. People are searching for connection, for love, for recognition in, awesome. in a positive way. And you get to do that every day. That's amazing. Uh, I, I got to say, though, now I'm kind of disappointed about the T-shirts. Why? I want a onesie. Let me tell you for <laughs> you. We, we have with these crotch. No. <laughs> um, how did you guys meet? Want to take that? Uh, J-Date. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, same here. Yeah, same yeah. with you guys. Yeah, yeah. J date's a great thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I have to take this one. I'll take it. Um, no, <laughs> I, 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 let's let oh, Todd. Todd, Todd you see, yeah. I told you I talked too much. No, but, um, let's see. After uh, <laughs> making Aliyah, we uh, we embarked. Uh, we met actually when we did our first project uh, of Crave in uh, in Jerusalem, and uh, we were brought together with uh, our other two partners, and we met through there. The partners. Uh, did the shidduch? Yeah, of. well, yeah. So there was one partner that brought us all together, mm -hmm. and uh, what I like to think of is like cream rises to the crop to the top, you know. And so, in that business, James and I really forged a, a relationship, which became that business. Mm -hmm. 
So you clicked immediately? We clicked immediately or? only because his madness <laughs> is very fueling and uh, would drive me crazy. But uh, listen, you have to understand, like for me, what I was singing mostly with James and we became friends, but as working partners, James had a lot to offer. I mean, the whole idea of the marketing, like you could make a great product. Like I do, I make a great product, but James is not enough. It's not enough, right? It's not enough. His uh, thinking outside the box of like bringing it to market and applying these, these ideas of uh, the high tech market and how he used to market that and was very interesting to me, very exciting. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm not coming from that. Like it had small restaurant, had high end restaurants. So you don't know when markets like that. No one does that kind of thing. But this was a totally different beast. What we were, what we were building, um, where it was like street food and you know accessible food for a lot of people. And how do you get that message out? So James gives me like every opportunity to 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 be creative, which I love. So he just, just throws the ball at me. So he's like, James, call me up all the time. Hey, Trump's coming to town. I need a Trump. We need to do a Trump burger. <laughs> So, so it's like was it the oh, best it was, it was, the, it was best. the best we had all the best yeah, people okay. putting it together <laughs> yeah. all the good bunch people, of smart people uh with Geniuses. the best ingredients yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and the best words to describe it so, strongest uh, strongest strongest burger yeah. in the world so we but like constantly was uh but i you know and understood what the impact was like what the need for that is like as a chef you're like what the hell i don't fucking need to do this shit every day like but I understood what the idea was behind the marketing of it. And not only that, it becomes fun. Like, you know, uh, we were, myself and, and uh, my sous chef, uh, Yotam, at the time, we would sit down and we would throw us an idea and we'd be like, okay, what do you think? This is what we should do. <laughs> we'd come up with some great things. And it was fun. And, but the whole, and, and that's what really perpetuated the business and, and, and pushed it and defined it and what it was. Uh, it was keeping my creativity fresh and it was a fresh uh, way of looking at marketing and pushing it. So we really hit it off and we knew that we were really the essence of that business, what was going on. And we had other ideas about what, where we wanted to take that partnership, what we want to do with it. And Bodega really is a, is a, is a product of that. So uh, maybe this, this is a good way to, to end, but I wonder if... Uh if the opportunity presented itself for Bodega to uh, spread, to become a franchise, let's say, I mean, not, you know, McDonald's, but if you could open a hundred branches all over the world, all over Israel, is that something that you feel like is a possibility? Would you be interested or is it, is there a philosophy behind like, okay, there's just one spot? Well, those conversations are happening right now. I can't really get into a lot of it because a lot of it is early, but the the point of what we do is to touch as many people as possible, and but, I th- but legally, legally, <laughs> <laughs> above the table, <laughs> <laughs> on setting the table, right? Um, that that's happening. That that's part of our of our plan, and that's kind of what's cool about doing it from here. Because there's a big world out there, and um, a lot of yeah, there are a few smatterings here or there of people who do eat kosher, but that's not our market. Our market is folks who are eating halal, people who are looking for a particular experience that they hadn't had before. Those are the kind of conversations that we're having. The Ramal- Ramallah branch of the branch. Sure. I think there's already a KFC there, right? And somebody <laughs> yeah, told me about in that. Hebron or something. In Hebron, yes. Yeah. Yes, the Chevron KFC. Uh, <laughs> That's so sad. Well, what we what, sorry, what what we like to say about ourselves is we're the only um, Israeli or Jewish whatever organization that's pro BDS. Why are we pro BDS? Yeah, burgers, dogs, sandwiches. Uh, okay. So we're the BDS organization that you could all believe in. Nice. Uh, so 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 sh- short answer is yeah. And in fact, in that vein, I want to give you guys a gift. Yes. yes. I'm extra small. I was going to say you didn't bring enough. TMI, brother. <laughs> TMI. Oh. Uh, no, anyway, anyway but I did. So, this, I don't know if folks are uh, looking at the camera. This is our tagline, if you see Pastrami Pist- Kings of the Middle East. Oh, that's that's amazing. us. Amazing. And this is going to be my favorite shirt and my girlfriend's. It's really comfortable, like, too. Yeah. Since that's the only thing I've ever seen. She's going to hate it. Uh, made in Israel, locally sourced. 
course, as well. Nice. Amazing. Amazing. So this is for you guys. These Yay. are official Bodega yes. One day it'll, it'll, it'll be worth a bunch. Well, you're, you're going to laugh, but we actually had somebody in who bought the shirt and wanted Todd and me to sign it. Cool. Really? Yeah. So well, we're well, not going to do that for you guys. Yeah. That's just weird. No, we want it on our chests. I want it in like a again like a magic markers. So <laughs> oh, you oh your chest this time. Light. Okay, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. So when they find me, I dead. tell them, you know, my signature and forty-five shekels gets you a burger. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you want to plug? Wasn't this what we were doing like, <laughs> an hour? <laughs> Wasn't it like just a, a big plug? Some kind of restaurant or something? Yeah, yeah you know, food recommendations in Tel Aviv. Look, when I, <laughs> I think it's real easy to oh come to bodega. Okay, obviously. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on. People should hang out. People should try different things. Um, where is the bodega? I'll, 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 do, I'll do it for you. Go to bodega, guys. But where where Literally, where the food was amazing. It's Thank right you. across from Cinematheque. Carlebach, right? Four, 14 Carlebach. 14, 14 Carlebach. Not a five-minute walk from Cinematheque. It looks like a really cool joint. I'm I'm definitely gonna be there very soon. Awesome! And thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank really, you. it was amazing. Really, really thank thanks, thanks for man. the gifts so and the, the you, merch and the food. Yes. Um, before we go, yes, we we have a collaboration with uh, the Jewish Journal, uh, JewishJournal.com. They do columns. They got podcasts. So guys, check them out. JewishJournal.com. The David Suisa podcast. The uh, Rosner. Shmuel Rosner. Check yep. them out. And and we collaborate with Arutz Sheva. IsraelNationalNews.com. Um, they have great content, great articles, so go, and, and nice Facebook page also. Yeah, we're on Can, their Facebook page. We're yeah. on their, their website sometimes. So go check them out. And yeah. And also. Also, last <laughs> thing, uh, we do this on our free time. So to NJB.com slash donate if you want to help us out. Again, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you so much really. for coming. It's been amazing. Amazing, thank amazing you. food. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Expect to see you there. Yeah. For sure. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.